Okay, today we come to the last section of the mindfulness of the body. We discussed uh, all of these five parts. Mindfulness of the body is divided into six parts. First was uh, mindfulness of breathing, then mindfulness of the posture, third mindfulness of uh, uh, clear comprehension, fourth mindfulness of uh, parts of the body, 32 parts of the body, fifth mindfulness of uh, four elements, and sixth is uh, nine channel ground contemplation. Now channel ground, ground contemplation is of course uh, related to death and therefore it is good for us to spend some time uh, talking about uh, death uh, then go to channel ground <laughs> naturally after death. <laughs> so we first have to die then <laughs> go to channel ground. But uh, also I like to uh, say a word of caution for sometimes uh, people might uh, feel that we have been talking all along all pessimistic negative things you know impermanence and, and um, uh, uh, unpleasant parts of the body and repulsiveness and uh, now come to talk about talking about death. <laughs> <laughs> People can ask, uh, is there anything pleasant that we should talk about? <laughs> talk about why all this all this negative normally people ask this question why normal why all these uh, negative things right I can see some heads uh, shaking <laughs> 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 uh, friends we have been uh, people have been obsessed with uh, so-called pleasurable thinking and it is good occasionally to think of the other side as well <laughs> because life is not always pleasurable. Life is full of unpleasurable uh, uh, things. And uh, generally we uh, don't want to talk about them because of the nature of unpleasantness. We want to uh, think about uh, something always uh, pleasant and uh, uh, and yet we experience uh, a lot of uh, displeasure. You know it is very uh, important for us to live this life knowing, understanding uh, the truth, true nature of this life uh, by trying to hide uh, the reality is not going to uh, uh, make it uh, uh, disappear or make it, uh, make it, we cannot make it uh, uh, not happen, it happens. And therefore it is good for us to think about it. Uh, once we uh, understand it, then we will uh, not have any fear of um, that. We will, we uh, all must understand uh, that is uh, inevitable, it happens to us. Although we may 
think that uh, it may not come to us. And Buddha said, Maranadhammanam bhikkhire sattanam evam icha uppajyati aho vatamaya na maranadhamma asama nacha vatano maranam agachayasi nagopanetam icha patabha. People, beings who are subject to death, wish may death never come to me. He said, Nakopanetang ichai padapam, by so wishing, one cannot stop death. Because we are subject to death. And this is what is called uh, uh, not getting, uh, getting what one doesn't want. We don't want death, but it comes to us. And that is uh, suffering. When we contemplate on death, then we uh, sort of immune to the fear. We will not have fear of death. When we are afraid of it, any tiny little thing can make us frightened, nervous, uh, try to run away from it. But when we uh, uh, understand it, know it, that it, is hap it happens to us, then uh, it doesn't matter to us. We have a special meditation on death. This is one of the four reflections, what you call protections. Four kinds of protections. One protection is the reflection of the qualities of the Buddha, Buddha Anusati. Second is the reflection of impurities of the body, Asubha Anusati. Third is reflection of de death, Marana Anusati. And the fourth is reflection of loving friendliness, Metta Anusati. Buddha Anusati, uh, metta anusati, marana anusati, uh, and asubha, impermanence, or what you call unpleasantness, unattractiveness of the body. Now, when we uh, reflect on death, how can that protect us? Ca when we think of death, uh, uh, reflect on death, would uh, that reflection stop us from dying? <laughs> no. That would definitely stop us from having fear of death. Also, it will uh, protect us from becoming overly uh, proud of our longevity. When when somebody lives very long in good health, the person will become very proud of his longevity, long life, and will not become humble and simple. So, and also become arrogant and doesn't care for other people, but uh, get angry. When somebody knows that one would die, then uh, the person would be able to uh, forgive, forget other people's mistakes and will not be too proud of long life. Uh, so, even you know, it is said that uh, Buddhas don't come into this world when uh, uh, lifespan is uh, thousands of years old long. They don't come to this world because uh, when a Buddha comes to this world and start teaching impermanence, people will not be able to grasp the meaning or conceive the meaning of impermanence when the life is too long. And therefore, the re reflection on death is extremely important. 
Now, uh, we have uh, refle meditation in, if you look at the Vandana book, we have a special meditation called meditation on death, Marna Nusati. That also is uh, one of the five reflections that we have to uh, reflect upon every day. Uh, because bo all, um, everybody, both uh, monastics as well as lay people, uh, die, therefore they have to reflect on death every day. That is one of the five reflections. Also, you can see in our uh, Vandana book. It, it uh, strengthens our uh, confidence and also it uh, uh, arouses our uh, spiritual urgency, spiritual urgency. That is, that is called Dhamma Sangvega. What is spiritual urgency? When we know that we mm, die uh, and reflect on death, then we will see this life actually is not too long, this is very short compared to the amount of things that we have to do and we are doing every day. We don't have too much time to do uh, anything wholesome because uh, before we uh, before our eyes uh, blink, we would be dead, so to say. <laughs> I mean, death is so quick. And uh, that is why Buddha said, Ajjeva kichyang atabhang ko janya maranang suve nahino sangrantena mahasena na machuna Do what we are supposed to do today. Don't postpone it for tomorrow. Perhaps tomorrow we may die. There is no agreement with Mara that uh, after doing such and such, I will die until there's such time I won't die. Mara would not leave us alone like that. As I said, even the Buddhas have defeated Mara's army. Mara's army are greed, disappointment, anger, uh, fear, uh, jealousy, uh, then uh, restlessness, worry, sleepiness, uh, Uh, conceit, uh, deceptiveness, uh, wishing for false reputation and uh, vicious state of mind. These are the Mara's uh, army. And the uh, Buddha managed to defeat them. As I mentioned the other day, uh, Buddha had to keep fighting with Mara all the time. Even after the attainment of enlightenment, he was fighting with Mara. Before he went to, uh, when he was going to attain enlightenment, Mara came and said, now why do you want to attain enlightenment? You are a, a, a prince, you have all the luxury, comfort, everything you want, go and enjoy your life, do some meritorious deed as a prince, living a good life. Then uh, Buddha snubbed him and said, you shut up, you get out of my way, let me, <laughs> 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 let me proceed with my plan. <laughs> so he went ahead and uh, uh, when he was practicing self-mortification, practicing all kind of meditative techniques, Mara came again and tried to um, request him to die. 
And when he fainted after not having food, Mara was so glad that Siddhartha was dead. And again, when he gained his consciousness and started practicing and sat under the Bodhi tree to attain enlightenment, Mara tried his you know, very level best to defeat the Buddha, Siddhartha. And that day, he had a big battle with Mara and defeated him. Mara, no, defeated his army, Mara's army. And Mara was not defeated. Mara was still following the Buddha. Then he came to Mara, Buddha and said, now you have gained your enlightenment. Uh, now, what do you want to live? Please, pass away. <laughs> Go, get lost. <laughs> Buddha, said, <laughs> Buddha said, no. Don't try to uh, cheat me. I will not pass away until bhikkhu, bhikkhunis, upasaka, upasakas, four categories of uh, sangha are established. I will not pass away. So he took his own sweet time and he taught the Dhamma and 45 years he established the community of Sangha. And then again, Mahara came, now what are you going to do? You have done everything. You have established the Sangha, as you said, now please pass away, go, die. And Buddha said, finally, okay, give me three months. He took three, <laughs> three months uh, uh, leave <laughs> before he in a notice, three months notice to Mara and announced that he was going to pass away on the Vesak day 2547 years ago and that's what he did. Now even the Buddha could not defeat the Mara. He defeated Mara's army. And finally, he succumbed to Mara. That is why it is a suya sattama punyiddi buddhi buddhi jinadvayam ghateshi maranam kippam khatumadisake katha. All those who have attained full enlightenment were succumbed to Mara, death. Silent Buddha succumbed to Mara. Arahans also succumb to Mara. Those who have gained great fame, name, achievement, everything in life died. Then needless to talk about me. I die too. So that means Death is inevitable. When we think of it, is there any way to escape? We may escape our sickness. We all know that um, in modern uh, uh, technology is so advanced, uh, medical science is so advanced, uh, chemistry is so advanced, uh, knowledge of uh, uh, biology is so advanced and so forth, they have discovered many, many different things to uh, prolong life, maybe a few years. Manage to get rid of uh, infant mortality and the lifespan expanded, extended a little bit longer. We live relatively healthier life now. But is there anything that they have discovered to stop death? No. It is not possible. And I always say that we all were born with one way ticket. And we can, we don't have a return ticket. And we always go forward towards that end every single moment, every single day. Being afraid of it, what can we do? 
not not talking about it can we stop it i think it is very good to throw it open discuss look at it since you cannot fight join as it is as saying goes if you cannot fight join we cannot fight and therefore it is very good for us to discuss think understand read meditate on death every tiny little aspect of it we must understand then only we will have a courage we will have a very strong power within ourselves to face death without any fear you know meditating on death is one way of facing dying uh, peacefully meditating on mindfulness meditating on uh, metta meditating on the buddha dhamma and sangha and all these are wonderful but meditating contemplating on death is the surest way of dying peacefully because we have prepared ourselves Me- preparing for death does not mean that we lie on the street on the road for a truck to run over us meditating on death means uh, very mindfully <coughs> thinking about death and preparing for it by doing wholesome things the purpose of reflection on death is to know that we die therefore since we are living very short period of time during that short period we must do whole something and live that short period mindfully meaningfully for that purpose we think of death very often we must think about it so uh all those who lived in the past are all dead all those who are living now are dying and all will come into existence in future will die without any exception now friends we are dying we are dying every single moment no question question about it <coughs> uh at the moment we were conceived in our mother's womb that moment we came with death along us along with us we came with death when we die <coughs> the pathologist uh, perform uh, autopsy to find the cause of death <laughs> what is the cause of death but <laughs> buddha buddha said cause of death is birth very simple <laughs> don't try to look for any other cause <laughs> and therefore uh, since we since we have uh, we are living with that cause in us all the time then we uh, are subject to death and we are dying every moment that is called momentary death momentary death is uh, uh, every single moment uh, uh, we die this is another part of uh, what you call impermanence impermanence if we understand impermanence quite well then we understand death quite well so in the mindfulness meditation we are we are always contemplating on these three characteristics impermanence is one unsatisfactoriness and selflessness are the other two there is uh, uh, there are three moments that is rising moment peaking moment and uh, shattering moment or dying moment <coughs> that means every cell 
every moment of our feeling, perception, thoughts and consciousness is arising, reaching maturity and passing away. Every part of our body and mind, all the five aggregates, all the aggregates coming into existence, reaching its maturity and passing away every moment. Not only the body, our feelings. Body goes through what is called uh, a process called old age, uh, decay before it dies. Every cell goes through that process. Every feeling goes through that process. Feeling also arises, grows, that means decays and dies. Perception arises, <coughs> grows or decays and dies. Thought arises, grows, matures, decays and dies. Consciousness arises, matures, decays and dies. Think about it. Think about your feelings. Don't they reach the maturity and pass away? Our feeling reaches maturity and then pass away. It happens so quickly that we hardly can notice it happening. Our perception rises, reaches maturity and passes away. <coughs> and it happens so quickly that we cannot notice it. So, not only the body, we talk about, when we, whenever we talk about, generally when we talk about, generally people talk about uh, uh, growth, maturity, decay, death, sickness and so forth, we talk only about the body. Even the feeling falls sickness, <coughs> perception falls sickness, Conscious, consciousness falls sickness. In the Anathalakana Sutta, uh, Buddha said the Rupam Bhikkhe Anatta, Rupam Chedam Bhikkhe Atta Abhavisa Naidang Rupam Abhada Sangvatati. Vedana bhikkhi vyanatta, Vedana hi cham bhikkhi vyanatta, Bhavishtha naidhan Vedana abadha sangvattati. Vedana means feeling is without self. If the feeling has self, then feeling will not fall sick. If the feeling falls sick, we have sick feeling. What is sick feeling? When the feeling arises, our body is like sick, mind is like sick, conscious of everything we feel sick. So we, fe we feel our sickness of feeling. Similarly, he said the uh, perception, thoughts, we have a sick thought, our thought becomes sick and a consciousness becomes sick. Vijnanam chedam bhikkhe atta abhavisa naidang vijnanam abhada sangvattati. Nachalabhati vijnani evang me vijnanam hotu evang me vijnanam ma ahosi. It does, it, um, you cannot say let my vin consciousness be not thus, let my consciousness be thus. Since there is no self, you cannot control your consciousness. I think it is very good for people to look at Anathala Kansuti in our Vandana book. <coughs> we have translated it and uh, it's very good to see that. Very good to see that even the feeling, perception, thought and consciousness falls sick, decay and die. So what is the wrong in thinking of that? What is the wrong in thinking of this true nature, reality that is happening to us all the time? We must become fully aware of what really is happening to our body and mind. And then what? Then what should we do? We accept it. We accept it. We go along with it. 
and then try to make the body mind or body feeling perception thought and consciousness uh, an object of gaining wisdom and insight. Seeing this impermanence of the body we do not try to stop its growth, we go along with the growth. Seeing impermanence of feelings, we do not try to grab hold onto the feeling or stop the impermanence, we go along with the impermanence of feelings. So, we completely, totally uh, condition ourselves or recondition ourselves to accept us as we are. That is the purpose of reflection of the death. Because it happens every moment for everything that we have and therefore we must learn to accept it. When we accept it we become very strong and confident. So, uh, never be afraid of talking about death. I have been telling my friends, I, I talk from my own experience. I have been thinking of death. Since 1947, I go to bed every night thinking that I may not wake up tomorrow morning. Tonight in sleep I will die. That thought never bothers me at all. I go to sleep and get up and I work as, a, as if I am not going to die. But when I go to bed, I think I will die in sleep. <coughs> I have this thought because I had very near death experience many times. And therefore, I know what death means, how it happens. You know, uh, last year, I think, when I was meditating, I was, I just lost, less, le lost my mm -hmm. consciousness. I just fell as all these, some of these people were here, right here on the floor. I did not know an, anything. They said my head hit the table, which I did not know. And uh, then the ambulance came and uh, big fuss and took me to the hospital. Uh, so, of course, I gained consciousness uh, soon. But that experience was a wonderful experience. It happened while I was in meditating, me meditating. And I was meditating, I was practicing mindfulness meditation. In mindfulness meditation, I always think and see impermanence. When it occurred, I was in a very peaceful state. I think that is how we should die. Stay peacefully seeing impermanence. Every tiny little thing is changing, disappearing, impermanent, impermanent. And then You can never have that experience if you are afraid of fear, afraid of death. So, <clears throat> without any hesitation, try to cultivate the thought of death, day and night, and see how things change all the time. And when the conventional death comes, we will be ready because we have all the condition our mind so well that we can die very peacefully. So, never be afraid of it. So, I am telling you from my experience. <coughs> now, then what? Then after the death. Before death there are all kinds of superstition, superstitions and there are more superstitions after death. People have all over the world in all different, every different culture 
there are so many different superstitious beliefs with regard to not only dying, but even after death with regard to the dead body. I think um, if you were to, th I hope somebody, uh, an anthropologist will uh, look into this and write a book on different uh, rituals, different uh, superstitions that people have associated with death and after death. Anyway, uh, that is an entirely different subject. In Buddhist tradition, according to uh, Theravada Buddhism, Pali Buddhist tradition, there is no superstition whatsoever. Buddha said, Ayu usmacha vinyanang yadakaya jahantimang apa viddo tadaseti niratthang kalingarang. When life's life force, heat, consciousness, feelings left this body, the body is like a piece of log. Niratthang kalingarang. Kalingara is log. Actually, when we think about it, the body is much worse than log. Log you can use for fuel. <laughs> what can we use this body for? Once all the heat and so forth have left, this start uh, rotting. And <coughs> Normally, not people uh, have been very lucky to see dead bodies. People are so unfortunate they cannot see dead bodies these days. They think it is fortunate. They sometimes people don't want to see dead bodies. When their dearest uh, parents or relatives die, sometimes people say, give orders to mort people who, uh, to, to undertakers do whatever you want I don't want to look at the body uh, as a dead body I want to remember the my mother my father my so and so when uh, he or she was alive in good health I have known some people when they send their uh, parents to hospital and when they received the call from the hospital saying so as so mother or father died, they said please take care of it. They pay the fee and undertakers will take care of it. And then finally perhaps they might get the ashes, that's all. That is another superstition I think. And also, uh, we cannot see dead bodies, even in those days in the Buddha's time, people could not see dead bodies that often, because uh, they did something to get rid of the bodies. And sometimes, uh, uh, meditators uh, used dead bodies to uh, meditate on. That is uh, what you call the cemetery meditation. <coughs> uh, monks, particularly we don't know any lay person or women did that, but monks have done that. And when they wanted to use the dead bodies for, as object of meditation, they first have to get the permission of the district officers, officers, police, so, uh, you know, uh, in chief of that area or, and so forth, first must get the permission. Why? Because if the monk goes to the cemetery to uh, contemplate on the body, uh, if sometimes thieves come to steal something from the body, sometimes people have jewelry and so forth along with them, they may discard the body in the cemetery and thieves sometimes come and take them away. And if monks were there without uh, proper uh, permission, they will get into trouble. Therefore, the monks have to inform the chief of that area. 
Secondly, he must inform the undertakers, the people who uh, either bury or uh, uh, cremate the bodies. And then appointed day, they go and uh, start meditating. <coughs> Sometimes monks went and uh, roll the bodies over and collect the piece of cloth by which the body is was wrapped. Normally those days people wrapped up their bodies and uh, deposited on the cemetery. Not buried, but just left there for animals to come and eat because they wanted even the bodies to be of some use for other animals. And that is why the robes called Pangsukula Chivara. Pangsukula means the, the, the cloth taken out of cemeteries. Uh, Buddha was wearing a robe uh, made of uh, such uh, rags collected from the cemetery. There was a slave girl called Punna. When she died, her body was wrapped up in a piece of cloth and thrown into the channel ground. And the Buddha <coughs> went and kind of took that piece of cloth and cut into small pieces and <laughs> made the robe, which of course later on he had exchanged with the Venerable uh, uh, Mahakasapa. <coughs> anyway, uh, monks go to cemeteries to collect cloth or to reflect on the death. Uh, but even those days it was not uh, very common, it is rare sight. Let alone these days, you cannot see dead bodies these days. If you see a body, it is not of this description. Dead bodies, when you see it in uh, funeral homes, uh, as you know, they look like just after their wedding. <laughs> Very neatly dressed and, you know, made all the makeups and so forth. Very, you know, nice looking uh, bodies. <laughs> that is so uh, you cannot see this kind of description <laughs> of dead bodies these days. So anyway, in order to get rid of all our superstitions, one must go through each of these steps to see what really happens to the body after death. When the uh, lifespan, life, life force and so forth are gone, <coughs> sometimes people say after death uh, the, uh, the one who died would uh, uh, maybe something, some sort of force of comes out of the body and uh, you know roam around uh, looking for a suitable place to take birth for six days, seven days and so forth until the person finds a good suitable place to take rebirth. In Buddhist tradition we don't believe in that, in, especially in Theravada Pali tradition. Buddha said the Upanita Vayocha Dhani si Yama Purisa Picha Tamapatita Vaso pichate nati antara patheyam pichate navijati. When the death has approached, if you have not prepared your provision for the next life, you don't, you are in uh, trouble because there is no waiting period. Vaso pichate nati antara antara vaso nati. That means there is no intermediary stage between death and rebirth. It happens immediately. Although some people think that uh, you have a chance to look around, uh, you know, to choose a suitable place to take rebirth. If we all have a chance to do that, nobody will be reborn in a wrong place. Everybody, <laughs> everybody will choose the best place and the worst place will be always empty. <laughs> that is that's not happening actually. What happens is according to our karma, 
at the moment of death, the sign of karma, sign of the place where we take rebirth, and uh, sign of uh, the agents that you use to commit karma will appear in our mind. Sign of uh, karma means the sort of things that we have been doing. Uh, perhaps uh, you all will have a very good sign of karma because you are meditating. So at the moment of your death, you will see meditation cushion, meditation, <laughs> <laughs> meditation place, uh, sitting very quietly, peacefully, monk sitting in front of you, facing you, meditating in front of the shrine room. All these are things that make you very comfortable and you peacefully will die. So you are very lucky. Or <coughs> you will see a place you are going to take rebirth. That place also will be very peaceful place. So when, it, when it, it happens so quickly, friends, so quickly there is no time to think. Because everything is all the conditioned, prepared, and you just, hap it happens such a split second like lightning, then you will be there. So anyway, after that, body goes through these stages. And there is nothing remain. Some people believe, you know, this body will, you will never, should not uh, cremate because uh, it must resurrect one day on the judgment day for uh, supreme being to come and give the judgment. Decide, okay, you go down there and you go down up. <laughs> to make that decision, you got to come back in some form and if you are cremated you have no that chance and therefore they don't cremate. For Buddhist it doesn't matter you that you cremate or bury or eaten up or give to animals doesn't matter because that is a dead body it has nothing to do with <coughs> your life now. So therefore Buddhist meditators particularly must uh, uh, go through the whole process to see impermanence very clearly. This is the last visible stage of impermanence and very visible. We can contemplate on death uh, whenever we see an animal. You know, sometimes um, when I walk, I see deer on the roadside, killed and rotting. I think this is a good sign to meditate on death. Next day or two days, all these uh, big hawks, vultures, they come and eat it in two, three days, all gone. So we cannot do that. But if we find an animal, if you... Um, keep looking at it every day, we get this uh, understanding. <coughs> anyway, uh, since we cannot see dead bodies, Buddha said, Seya Thapi Bhikkhave. Seya Thapi Paseya Sarirang Sivatika Chaditang. Ekamatang, Dvihimatang, Tihimatang, Uddhumatakang, Vinilakang, Vipubbakang, Vipubbakajatang, and so forth. That means, as if you, as if you have seen a dead body, meaning you got to imagine dead body. Since you cannot see, because this you can practice anywhere, anytime, um, any time in the, in, in the history or any place in the world. Because as I mentioned, different countries uh, have different superstitions and therefore they have get, they 
they have they do different things to dead bodies and uh, you may not be permitted to go and watch the dead bodies and so forth therefore we got to imagine what will happen to dead bodies imagine one two three days dead body in the channel ground <coughs> bloated discolored festered and then you reflect so too he compares his body with that body thinking such is the nature of this body that means such is the nature of this body referring to one's own body I will become like that that dead body this is uh, unavoidable so <coughs> what I see right here or what I can imagine what happens to so and so's body it is dead two three four days bloated festered and um, smelly and so forth the same thing will happen to this body you have no control because it is dead it is just dead you don't have any feeling anything so that happens to a body and you can see all these uh, uh, nine stages and the insight is this is the insight first in this case you reflect on the external body in the previous cases in the in the uh, four previous five groups of mindfulness of the body we reflect on us first on our breathing our feeling uh, our, our breathing posture and so forth we reflect on them and gain good complete perfect understanding insight and then you reflect on others external things but this one you reflect on others another body and then reflect on your body and say to yourself such is the nature of this body nature of my body so called my body it will become like that this is unavoidable so what you visibly encounter you understand that as it is and then compare your body with that body or compare what happens to that with what will happen to your body and that is your insight and then this is a sort of a stock passage although repeated but uh, here first iti bahidhava kaya kaya nupasi virati iti ajjhattangva kaya kaya nupasi virati first we have to say this is what happens to external body and therefore this is what happens to this internal body my body as I mentioned this internal and external always have to be consistent now it is not referring to only one single thing that means you are inhaling when you take inhaling as internal exhaling as external that's wrong we always compare us with others or them with us in this case we compare them with us so <coughs> and again 
here is another very good ex a very good place to contemplate on independent he dwells uh, he dwells uh, compare in this body as uh, body external and so forth and then he says uh, he dwells independent not clinging to anything in this world even here attikayoti vapanasa satipachupattita hoti he reflects that there is body uh, uh, there is mindfulness that there is body for me to gain insight that means here is the body dead body and i contemplate on this body for me to gain insight what is the insight i gain that just like that body my body is impermanent that is the insight so uh, we don't think that uh, we become aware of the existence of the body and again the knowledge that just body is there that is not the real meaning some people say you uh, keep practicing um, mindfulness and gain concentration and so forth then let the body be there attikaya tu apnas yam dev jnana mattaya some people say we become aware we have have mere awareness that the body is there don't worry about it this is just there that is not the meaning meaning is that this body is there for me to gain knowledge and insight satipatti patitavati yavade jnana mattaya pati sati mattaya the body is there for me to gain wisdom jnana knowledge and sati mindfulness what is the knowledge knowledge of impermanence what is the mindfulness mindfulness of impermanence so i think you can go through all the rest in the rem the remaining eight uh, uh, stages of uh, dead bodies until you come to the last stage where the body is even without doing anything you just leave it there it keeps uh, rotting and rotting and rotting and all the liquid will be completely dry disappear absorbed into the earth and uh, worms will be uh, eating the body and the animals will be eating and flesh disappearing and blood uh, drying out uh, sinews break down and the bones separate and then bones can go through the process of decaying and then become porous and then slowly reduce into powdered dust and one day when the big gush of wind blows this dust will disappear the end of the body nothing left there what is the essence is already gone as soon as we die all the necessary essence is already gone finish something has happened already reborn somewhere but this is just a pulp <laughs> just rot like that. so friends uh, this is a very very good subject of meditation look at this very carefully more carefully now and reflect most mindfully and read it very slowly with full understanding never be afraid of it you will gain real deep insight into your own body and mind i think this is enough for the talk